Silk is a new quantum programming language designed to abstract from low-level implementation details of quantum algorithms. This is joint work by Benjamin, Maximilian, Timon and Martin. We are all from ETH Zurich. In contrast to existing quantum languages, Silk supports a descriptive view on quantum algorithms that expresses the high-level intent of the programmer. As a consequence, Silk algorithms are significantly shorter and simpler, less error-prone, and modify the program's quantum state according to an intuitive semantics that follows the laws of quantum physics. Before we get started, we provide a minimal background to quantum computation. The state of a single quantum bit phi is a complex linear combination of cat0 and cat1, often referred to as superposition. Here, gamma0 and gamma1 are complex coefficients. More generally, a quantum state is a complex linear combination over a ground set S, where S contains 0 and 1 in the case of quantum bits, but can contain more and different values in general. We can combine quantum states using the tensor product. Here we show two example states phi0 and phi1, whose composite state is shown below. An important quantum operation is measurement, which probabilistically collapses the state to one of multiple options. In this example, we measure the second qubit, which is a superposition of 0 in green and 1 in blue. After measurement, the second qubit collapses to either 0 or 1, which implicitly also collapses the first qubit. This is an important aspect of quantum computation that we address in our work. Namely, measurements can lead to side effects, which are often unintuitive. So what is the key difference between Silk and other languages? To answer this question, let's look at this simple example, which computes the OR of three quantum bits A, B and C and stores the result into D. This is a simple computation that looks trivial in Silk, so let's see how you would express it in existing languages. In Q-sharp, you need to explicitly allocate a temporary qubit T and store the OR of A and B into T and then store the OR of T and C into D. However, the computation does not end there. Namely, you need an additional step to uncompute T, indicated by a joint, which reverses the computation at calculated t, thus clearing the temporary information stored in t. We will see later why this is absolutely necessary. As one might expect, some languages have realized that this explicit uncomputation is tedious and unintuitive. For example, Kuiper has introduced the with computed function, which computes the OR of A and B, names the result t, computes the OR of T and C, and then implicitly uncomputes T. However, the programmer still needs to explicitly call with computed, which clutters the code and can lead to unintended errors. In contrast, Silk code handles uncomputation automatically and safely using a novel quantum type system we will discuss in the following. Because the philosophy of Silk is quite different from other languages, we start with a few simple examples in Silk. The code snippet above applies the Hadamard operation H to X and introduces the name Y for the result. In the bottom, we represent the code above in the widely used circuit model. We know that our type system treats the input to H linearly, thus X cannot be used after it is consumed by H. Often, it is convenient to think of this operation as applying the Hadamard operation to x, as in this example, which reassigns the output of h to x. Finally, this last example applies the Hadamard operation h conditionally on x, which should be intuitive for programmers, but is often not written this way in existing quantum languages. To take a closer look at Silk, we demonstrated on Grover's algorithm, which solves the following search problem. Given a function f, which returns false everywhere except at the single solution w star, find w star. Note that f operates on n bit unsigned integers and returns booleans. 
This is the signature of Grover's algorithm, which we now discuss in detail. Grover has a generic parameter n, which parameterizes the input type of f. The type of n is bang n, indicating classical natural numbers of arbitrary size. Here, annotation bang indicates n is classically known, meaning that it can be used without restrictions just as any variable in a normal classical language. As a parameter, Grover takes a function f, which in turn takes unsigned n-bit integers and returns booleans, as discussed before. Function f is annotated as q3, which is a novel annotation introduced by Silk. To understand the meaning of q3, we look at a canonical example of a q3 function, the x gate or not operation. x takes 0 to 1 and vice versa. Here we write cat v, where v is either 0 or 1, because x operates on quantum states. In general, any q3 function can be described as a function f tilde operating on classical values. As an example of a non-q3 function, we quickly show the Hadamard operation h, which is more complex and cannot be described using a function f tilde. As we can see, the output of h is a linear combination of cat0 and cat1, often referred to as superposition. In general, all quantum operations we have just discussed can be linearly generalized to such linear combinations, as we show on the right hand side. The only difference to the left hand side is a sum over all possible values and a complex coefficient gamma v. The parameter of function f is also annotated as const, another novel annotation introduced by Silk. Const means that f preserves its input, which is highlighted in orange. Here, phi v indicates the output of f. Because f is both const and q3, we can combine both pieces of information to derive more about f, namely that it preserves its input v and that its output can be described by a function f bar, which operates on classical values. Here, f bar corresponds to the function describing our search problem, introduced initially simply as f. To give you a feeling for Grover's algorithm, we now show its full body and the quantum states it produces during the first iteration of its loop. Here, however, we only discuss one key aspect of Grover's algorithm, which demonstrates its automatic uncomputation. For a discussion of the remainder of Grover, we refer to our publication. Throughout the computation of Grover's algorithm, variable cant contains a complex linear combination of all possible candidate solutions to our search problem, which includes both non-solutions v and the unique true solution w star. Here, we have written such a complex linear combination by separating out w star. Now, evaluating the condition displayed on the left hand side requires evaluating the condition f of cant, which yields 0 for non solutions v and 1 for solutions w star, which we store into a temporary variable cont as indicated in the second state. Now, because phase of pi flips the sign of coefficients, the conditional phase of pi flips the sign of coefficients where the condition is true, resulting in the third state. In a classical language, we would be done now. We could just forget about the temporary value cont and continue with our computation. Unfortunately, if we do this in existing languages, the laws of quantum physics introduce an implicit measurement meaning that the state collapses to one of the states shown below. If you think that this is unintuitive and makes no sense, then we agree. This is not what a programmer should expect to happen. Instead, a reasonable expectation is that the temporary value stored in cont just disappears, as shown here. Silk offers precisely this semantics and uses its quantum type system to ensure this dropping semantics is physically realizable. Here, this is possible because cant is const and therefore still available for uncomputation and f is q3. 
This is sufficient to ensure that reversing the operations of F correctly uncomputes the condition, as we demonstrate in more detail in our publication. We have implemented a type checker and simulator for Silk as an extension to Visual Studio Code, which we demonstrate next. Here we see a simple Silk program, which applies the Hadamard operation H to variable X. Because the type of H takes booleans to booleans without preserving its input, which would require a constant notation, variable X is no longer available after the second line. Thus, if we try to access it in the third line, we get an error. This next function has a parameter x and returns x modulo 2. Note that x is not consumed in the function body, but is also not marked as const in the function signature. Therefore, any caller of this function would expect x to be consumed. Because this is not the case, our type system reports an error here. However, we can easily fix this error by explicitly stating that x is const and therefore should be preserved. This next function applies a quantum measurement conditioned on a quantum boolean C. This is not realizable on a quantum machine as the DEN branch requires a physical action, namely measurement, and we cannot determine whether or not we need to carry out this physical action without classically knowing the condition C. However, changing the type of C to be classical fixes this error, as conditional measurement is possible if C is classically known. A similar issue occurs in this example, where we try to reverse a measurement, which is physically impossible. We obtain the same type of error if we try to reverse an arbitrary function f, which may in general include a measurement. However, we can fix this error by annotating f as m3, meaning that it cannot contain a measurement. Finally, we demonstrate two examples where automatic uncomputation of temporary values is not possible, which is detected by our type system. Here, the not operation x consumes its argument y, meaning that y is not available for later uncomputation of the condition. Therefore, this example results in a type error. We could fix this type error by replacing x by a different not operation that does not consume its argument and changing the argument y to const accordingly. This last example shows a program where the condition is computed using the non-q3 function h. In this case, automatic uncomputation is impossible due to rather technical challenges we discuss in our publication. To conclude, we quickly want to demonstrate Silk Simulator. In this example, we run our Silk implementation of Grover's algorithm on a simple oracle function whose only solution is 3. As you can see, our simulator indeed finds this solution. To summarize, Silk comes with a quantum type system that captures important aspects of quantum computation, including M3 for computations that do not perform a measurement, const for variables that are not modified, an annotation indicating classical values, and Q3 for computations which can be described by functions operating on classical values. In our publication, we formalize these concepts and explain them in much more detail than is possible here. Further, we also demonstrate that these concepts allow us to write much shorter code than existing languages. For example, compared to Q-sharp, our code is roughly half as long for simple tasks that the Q-sharp developers themselves proposed and solved.